hamartoma can you tell sir, me about huh ji sir uh sir it is a benign local malformation of the neoplastic cells uh solid oval mass sir which hamartomas are uh abnormal arrangement of normal tissues and they have a limited potential of growth usually they grow for a small uh, limited time then they cease to grow uh some of the bone tumors are not true tumors they are hematomas they are normal normal cells normal tissues but abnormal arrangement uh for example uh, osteochondroma is an example osteochondroma well uh just remember that uh, among the bone tumors when we discuss about bone tumors we um, consider all the bony swellings and uh, which are not due to uh, a, a callus formation or infection otherwise the bony swellings we consider them together and some of them are not true tumors but they consider we consider them together for example a simple bone cyst uh, osteochondromas we all we consider them together uh, when uh, we classify them you know about the who classification i didn't discuss it in the lecture class now let us go to it uh, uh, well to take a look now bone tumors huh. uh who has classified the tumors according to their histologic histological origin uh, the tissue origin of the uh, abnormal tissues well it can come from bone it can come from cartilage and they have uh, divided them into three groups the benign groups benign tumors intermediate groups and malignant groups and among the tumors which develop from the bony elements there are osteoma osteoid osteoma osteoblastoma and among the intermediate group is aggressive osteoblastoma they are locally aggressive and among the malignant there is osteosarcoma so this is the arrangement of who classification they divide them into three groups whenever uh, they fall into these three groups osteosarcoma has many varieties mainly the histological types i am not discussing about those things and about the cartilage forming tumors osteochondroma that is truly uh, uh, in fact there is a hamartoma as i discussed chondroma it can be within the bone usually in the small bones uh, of uh, i mean phalanges and then we call them enchondroma sometimes they are on the peripheral part of the bone and bone is swelling from the peripheral part of a bone so there are several types of chondroma synovial chondromatosis it is considered a tumorous condition we have found that in some conditions of uh, abnormality in the joint particularly in the knee joint excessive uh, uh, i mean cartilage formation and throughout the throughout the capsule throughout the synovial uh, tissue and that is also tumorous condition so it is a benign condition synovial chondromatosis intermediate chondroblastoma and chondromyxoid fibroma they can be locally aggressive and among the lamong uh, malignant thing we have chondrosarcoma among uh, some of the tumors are derived from the marrow elements and ewing sarcoma is one of them neurectodermal uh, tumor of bone and myeloma these are all malignant tumors another group osteoclastic giant cell rich tumors well in general the uh, they are intermediate group locally aggressive rarely metastasizing that is the main group the giant cell tumor of bone it is locally aggressive and it has a malignant variety malignancy in giant cell tumor of bone but sometimes you can find benign truly benign giant cell tumor in the small bones but this group the middle one the intermediate locally aggressive rarely metastasizing that is the commonest thing okay 
and there are other tumors from fibrohistocytic tumors, notochordal tumors, vascular tumors. Well, let's go to some of the most important tumors of uh, bone, GCT. Well, anybody? Uh, your uh, Murad sir is with us. We are discussing now. Anybody about the giant cell tumor? Five percent of all primary bone tumors this is quite common. It is quite common, and it can uh, transform into osteosarcoma. And that is the hazard. It is locally aggressive. Can anybody tell about the clinical feature? Well, I find it a key. Shiti. Shiti Kotha Molana. Shiti, are you there? Shitish. Shitish. Shitish from Nepal, are you there? Yes, sir. Well, can you tell the clinical features of uh, the ansel tumor? Sir, we had a painful thing, sir. Yes. Then, dull uh, pain, dull pain, yes. Then, what is the age group, common age group? Common age group. Between 20 and 40? Mid age, anyway, sir. Middle age, yeah, that's true. Then, there mm -hmm. will be dull pain in the bone. It can uh, happen uh, close to a joint, which which site is common? Can you tell me? So it's in, it's in, uh, around the knee. Around the knee. Mm -hmm. So distal part of the femur and proximal part of the tibia. These are the common sites. It can happen to any bone. Uh, sometimes the flat bones are affected. For example, uh, scapula. Uh, for example, well, uh, pelvic bone. Sometimes ribs. They can be affected also. But when they are affecting the long bones, they will tend to occur close to the joint in the epifacial region, uh, close to the joint. Well, let's see. Young adults and uh, middle age. Yes, I should also call it middle age. Side distal femur, proximal tibia, proximal humerus, distal radius. Symptoms. You say it pain. There will be swelling. There may be history of trauma. We are not sure whether it is a cause or it just uh, brings the patient to uh, uh, to the uh, well, makes the patient conscious about the swelling. Well, pathological fracture, easily fracture can occur in a in a otherwise early stage. And signs when you examine, you will find there is bony swelling, increased warmth at the site. And when you palpate the, uh, palpate the tumor, you may find a eggshell crackling sensation. Eggshell crackling sensation. Well, let me, Shiddu Dim Khe So. Shritish? Shritish na? Shiddu Dim. Yes, sir. All day. Tumi yota ke jirto hadar modha na kor kor kore bhaange, aade niche. That sensation you can find. Oh, sorry. Well, a uh, shell crackling sensation, and that is the clinical feature, slow growing. Uh, when you go for the investigation, you do the routine things, from our, as for CDC, you may find an elevated ESR, otherwise it will be normal. Serum calcium, well, uh, it is done routinely for any uh, uh, bony tumor which is aggressive or which is malignant. Serum phosphatase, they becomes altered in malignancy. Serum alkaline phosphatase, any bone reformation, either will be increased serum alkaline phosphatase. X-ray will be very, uh, well, suggestive. And CT scan will give more details. 
and for uh, you have to go for uh, aggressive locally aggressive or malignant tumor you must go for mri so these are the routine x-ray chest is required because though it is a benign condition usually the giant cell tumors are benign conditions but it may metastasize and uh, if the metastatic lesion is removed it is, you will find that the lesion is also histologically it is benign but the metastasis is there so it's a borderline condition to confirm with biopsy uh, the histology will be like this the giant cells will be there but the tumor cells are the uh, spindle cells in between the giant cells these small cells and uh, this type uh, when it is a, a specimen this part is the GCT, giant cell tumor. X-ray, do like this. In the radius, uh, a lesion with soap bubble appearance. Just remember this thing, this term, soap bubble appearance. Shabaner phanar moto. Osteolytic lesion with soap bubble appearance. And when you go for the MRI, you may find that it has broken the uh, margin of the bone and passed into the soft tissue. It is an advanced case. Usually, the cartilage is uh, the articular cartilage is paired. Uh, but when it the joint uh, the tumor reaches up to the uh, joint cavity, it is advanced case, or, or when it goes into the surrounding soft tissue, it is advanced case. So, treatment. When you find the patient in an early stage, earlier than this, the articular surface is intact, it has not gone into the, uh, uh, I mean, embedded into the soft tissue, then you can go for curettage, to curate the tissue section and then you uh, uh, go for chemical sterilization, chemical cautery, cauterization with phenol or liquid nitrogen, and then go for bone grafting. That can be enough. That can be enough. But for any advanced stage, you have to go for excision of the lesion. Go for excision of the lesion and uh, you replace the gap with a bone graft or prosthetic prosthesis. And for uh, more uh, aggressive variety, you can supplement with radiotherapy. Okay. So that is the treatment of GCT. How much is it going to Well, commit that we have 80 minutes, 90 minutes to go. 90 minutes. Now, well, about osteosarcoma, that is one of the uh, commonest uh, primary tumors, primary bone tumors of the bone. Well, uh, eight most common tumor of in the childhood, 20% of all bone tumor, bone cancers, malignant bone tumors. And predominantly children and adolescents are affected. Young, young uh, age group is affected between 8 and 20 and uh, metaphysis of long bones are affected it is also around the knee it is commonest around the knee and it is a very aggressive tumor so early metastasis is common so about the others uh, Shongita, are you there Shangita, can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Walaikum salam. So we are discussing about osteosarcoma. Uh, well, uh, we found a young patient uh, with a bony swelling, uh, pain, well, and uh, low grade pain. Uh, if you suspect it's a case of malignancy because it is persisting 
uh, for a long time, maybe for weeks together, there is no history of injury, bony swelling and pain. How do you investigate? What do you want to do? Sir, X-ray. Sir, CBC. Yes, say uh, in, in the X-ray, what do you expect to find? Uh, sir. Uh, in the in the in, a, in your answer, uh, you will be asked like this in the Bible table, and in in the in the written uh, uh, answer script, you have to when you mention, I will advise X-ray and make a dash, and you will find I'll find this thing. So what do you find? Next so, sun ray appearance. Yes, sun ray appearance. For advanced cases, you can have sun ray appearance. And anything else? Sir. Codman's? Sir, Codman's triangle. Codman's triangle. Anything else? About the lesion, there will be osteolytic lesion. Usually there is osteolytic lesion in the bone, and these are the additional features. In fact, there is osteolytic lesion in the bone, mixed osteolytic osteosclerotic. Sometimes you can find, and this sunray appearance and the Codman's triangles, they are due to elevation of the periosteum and uh, new bone formation along the new uh, vascular, uh, I mean, uh, connections to the elevated part. Let's see. What we have, clinical features, live infection, X-ray. You set up the X-ray, and uh, you ask for uh, the MRI. Sometimes you can ask for CT if you want to have a details. But what do you find in MRI? What do you want to see in the MRI? Uh, is what is the importance of MRI? Can you tell me, Shangita? Sir, soft tissue extend. Yes, whether it has extended to the soft tissues, which is which may not be apparent in the X-ray, and also about the involvement of the medullary cavity. Within the medullary cavity, the tumor extends, and in the X-ray, you will find a small amount of uh, bone is affected, but in the MRI, you will find a larger amount of Medullary cavity is affected. It may find me this way. And the soft tissue, that's fine. And uh, radionuclide bone scan, what is the importance? Sometimes we advise this uh, bone scan, whole body bone scan. So to see the osteolytic lesions. Some metastasis. Yes, uh, you can identify these parts are affected. There will be increased uh, vascularity and increased radio uh, nuclear. So finally, you go for the biopsy and you confirm the diagnosis. Sometimes you cannot differentiate between an osteosarcoma, a fibro a fibrous histocytoma, or Ewing sarcoma. Only histopathology will guide you, give you the exact picture. What is the diagnosis? And uh, fine, good enough. Anybody there? Laxman, are you there? Yes, sir. Fine. So, Laxman, what will be the treatment? Sir. Well, you see these pictures. Uh, let me see. Yeah. So, in an advanced case, osteosarcoma may, may become a, such a big thing. There will be uh, increased vascularity, redness of the skin, shininess. But these are very advanced. You need to treat them much earlier. So, what will be the treatment? Okay. Thank you. Okay, you. Sir, multimodal therapy. Good. Multimodal therapy. And what is that? Chemotherapy, surgery, plus chemotherapy, virus. Chemotherapy, surgery, radiotherapy. In fact, radiotherapy is not routinely used. Chemotherapy and surgery is good enough. And how you give the chemotherapy? Sir, uh, 
chemotherapy as a new adjuvant yes and what's new the new adjuvant, adjuvant chemotherapy so new adjuvant chemotherapy so what do you mean by new adjuvant chemotherapy uh, before uh, before doing any surgery going for operative yes. procedure we do before going to a specific treatment by surgery or radiotherapy you can give chemotherapy beforehand and before yes and the importance is that you kill the micrometastatic emboli the emboli which are calling the micrometastatic the emboli are circulating in the blood and they are trying to find a place to settle to uh, give rise to secondaries so you kill the uh, i mean circulating uh, i mean uh, i mean the emboli tumor emboli and also you uh, you stop the growth of the primary site primary tumor it may shrink it may shrink and many of the tumor cells may die due to chemotherapy then you go for surgery and what type of surgery so surgery amputation limb salvage surgery whenever possible go for limb salvage limb surgery. surgery we want to preserve the function and if not possible then only you can go for amputation amputation but limb okay then what do you do reconstruction reconstructive surgery with yeah, yeah, limb surgery uh, limb salvage surgery in two uh, reconstructive surgery, surgery and after amputation you well prosthesis. later on you may give a prosthesis that's fine but after the surgery do you do anything else after surgery sir after surgery you have to repeat chemotherapy so chemotherapy before surgery chemotherapy after surgery So before chemotherapy, that is new adjuvant chemotherapy. Then you go for surgery. Then you give post-operative chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. Adjuvant. So that will that that will be uh, complete your treatment. But you need uh, rehabilitation. That is something else. Reconstruction of the limb. These are the alternatives: resection arthrosis, resection uh, reconstruction with massive allograft, or mega prosthesis mega prosthesis uh even sarcoma is similar management young age group is similar diaphysis of the lung bones are affected uh, the metaphyseal parts are affected commonly in uh, in in uh, osteosarcoma in young sarcoma the diaphysial parts are commonly affected clinical features somewhat different there will be more pain there will be pyrexia pyrexia is very uncommon in other types of tumors so pain and uh, pyrexia it may be uh, there may be a confusion whether it is an osteomyelitis so that is important giving sarcoma may be confused with an osteomyelitis there is generalized illness this is also present in osteomyelitis so Uh, when in a, yeah, in a patient there is all these features pain and pyrexia generally illness uh, you have to be careful uh, and you go for the necessary investigations the diaphysial part is affected here the fibula is affected there is periosteal reaction elevated periosteum sometimes on your skin appearance sometimes just a lesion osteolytic lesion and in histopathology you will find that is in sarcoma that is the onion skin appearance the layer of layer by layer new bone formation from the periosteum and that is the sunray appearance which is common in uh, osteosarcoma and that is a convex triangle so the treatment is multimodal therapy similar but with a different uh, chemotherapy i mean schedule i think we are at the end of the session permit for you can you see can you hear me or time out yes sir well i think uh, i i should stop here so uh, i have discussed about the some of the features of uh, bone tumors and three mo most important tumors uh your gct and uh, osteosarcoma and ewing sarcoma tomorrow uh, uh some uh, 
you can have more discussion with your uh, raiser. Okay, so see you today. That's all for today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.